Well, I'd like to welcome every one of you. Um, this is the time where we have our sermon that is more geared toward our, our children and our family, although we want to make it clear that, the, uh, that everything that goes on here is also for our children. We believe that children are able to understand truth. To put it this way, a Harvard professor that is 65 years old cannot understand the Gospel apart from the Holy Spirit. And a child that is six years old can understand the Gospel through the working of the Holy Spirit. So we preach the Gospel to our children and we know that God can use that Word to not only save them, but to transform their lives. But children, we're going to go today to 2 Corinthians chapter 3. We've been talking about God and we have been talking about why He made you. Now, the fact that He made you brings out two important points. One, you belong to Him. And two, He has sovereignty over your life. Since He made you and He's a loving God, He knows what's best for you. And what is best for you? For you to turn your heart toward Him. Not necessarily to turn your heart toward religion or turn your heart toward church or religious activities. No, God wants you to desire Him. To desire Him. Now, one of the ways in which we know about God and one of the ways in which we learn to follow God is through His Word. And in 2 Timothy chapter 3, we have verse 16. We have a, well, let's start in verse 15. We have a very important text. He says, well, let's, let's just go all the way back to 14. He says, you, however, talking to young Timothy, Continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of, knowing from whom you have learned them. He says, Timothy, I taught you. Now, Paul was an apostle. And when he spoke the things of God, as he has written here, they are things of perfection. He did not speak with error. He's saying, Timothy, you know from whom you have learned these things, so hold on to them. Children, when you study the Bible and you find something that the Bible tells you about God or about what you're supposed to do, you hold on to that and become convinced of it because it's not just a book. It's the Word of God. Okay? So he says, continue in the things you have learned. Children, listen to me. You learn something in a sermon that's conformed to Scripture. You learn something as you're reading the Bible. It's not just good enough to grab a hold of it and understand it and then walk out the door like so many adults do. Even me. But to grab a hold of it and continue on in it. When I worked in Peru and would go up into the mountains, sometimes you would meet a fellow believer walking down a path with his donkey and carrying all kinds of cargo. And if you would say, hermano, como estas? If you'd say, brother, how are you? He would say sometimes, avanzando, hermano, avanzando. What that meant was, I'm advancing. I'm advancing. And that's what we want to do. We want to have the Word of God and we want to learn it, but we want to advance. We want to keep progressing. You are, well, put it this way. If you're in the jungle and a jaguar begins to chase you, there's two options. You either keep advancing or you're eaten. Okay? It's the same way in the Scriptures. There's no stopping point. You just keep advancing. You just keep advancing. He's saying, continue in the things you have learned and become convinced of. You have got to become convinced of this, that the Bible is God's Word. And when it tells you something, it's of life and death importance. Okay? Now, I was over at the Houston's last night and they gave me, they forced me to eat this ice cream against my will. Okay? And I decided that the, the, the raspberry one was better than the other one. And if I tell you that and try to convince you of that and you don't follow me, you're not going to lose a whole lot. That's not that big a deal. But when the Bible talks to you and tells you something, you better grab a hold of it because Moses said, this is not some silly little thing. This is life or death. 
And so, he goes on and he says, Become convinced of because of whom, uh, from whom you have learned them. Now, I want to talk about two things before we stop and then the next time we'll come back at verse 15. Now, parents, this is very important for you. And this, this breaks my own heart when I look in the mirror of God's Word. There should be some kind of integrity in your life. There should be a sincerity, a realness that is communicated to your children. If you're going to go ahead and live like a marginal or contemporary or carnal or whatever you want Christian, it's best just to keep your mouth shut and not identify with Christ around your children. Remember what it says, parents? The name of God is blasphemed among the Gentiles because of you. The name of God is looked down upon and even mocked because of the behavior of people who claim to know Christ and don't act like it. Now, look what Paul's able to say. Paul looks at Timothy, and you know several times Paul says, imitate me. And here he says, you know who I am. You know who it is that's taught you. Although, men, if you've got your head down right now, I've got my head down with you. There are times that we fail. Times I fail. I need prayer. You need prayer. Brothers, this is why we need to pray for one another. But when you speak, it should be in the context of such integrity. Your children know that you are a man of God. They know that this is real in your life so that when you encourage them to be in the Word, they can see, yeah, well, I've seen his life. I've seen the way he lives. It's not just enough to, I hear people will say, well, you know, I want my children to see me studying the Bible. If they see you studying the Bible and not living the Bible, that will produce something horrid. If they're going to see you studying the Bible, let them see you living the Bible so that parents, when, when you talk to them, they can look and say, yes, I see the integrity of their life. I see the way they're living. This is real. This is real. Now, children, though, here's something you need to understand. Parents, they make mistakes. You can't use those mistakes as an excuse not to walk with God. Because you have the Word. And regardless of what everyone else does, you must follow God. You will have no excuse ever on the day of judgment. You have heard the Gospel and you have the Bible. Now, children, why do you learn to read? There's only one reason. One primary reason. So that you can read God's Word. Why did He give you ears to hear God's Word? Everything He gave you, He gave you so that you would know Him and make Him known. Alright. Let's, uh, let's pray. Father, thank You for this time. Thank You for Your Word and Your help and Your, your good Spirit and Your graciousness. In Jesus' name, Amen. Please visit our website at heartcrymissionary.com. There you will find information about the ministry, our purpose, beliefs, and methodologies, and extensive information about the missionaries we are privileged to serve.